Very lucky, and I'd like to wait, welcome Mr. McCarthy here, along with his, his colleagues. Um, I want to focus in on the whole uh, handling of uh, what seems to be a, a shambolic approach to the whole immigration uh, system um, and the provision of a, a, a accommodation. Um, I want to say shambolic approach. That's certainly what it is uh, from government level right the way down. Um, and I think what is needed is a, a fair, efficient and enforced immigration system with proper communication with communities. Um, and none of those things are happening on the ground with public representatives or uh, communities. Um, the whole process is actually failing uh, communities and also failing those who are, are coming uh, to these shores uh, seeking um, international uh, protection. So I'll, I'll start off in the, whole, the, the, the first area there, and that's the uh, community engagement. Um, and certainly uh, the approach that has been taken is shambolic. Um, and I'll give you one example in my local constituency of, of Wicklow, um, an area, um, Newtown Mount Kennedy, um, where going back to early March, um, uh, premises owned by uh, the HSE. There are question marks around the ownership of the, 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 the site. Um, but uh, bulldozers, JCBs moved in on the site, um, start removing topsoil, start putting in hardcore, um, preparing the ground for, for something. Um, despite repeated requests uh, to the department, the uh, community engagement team, we were told nothing is happening. Uh, the site is under review. There's an assessment being carried out. Um, that was the line I was fed. That was the line I was uh, feeding out to uh, the community. That went on for a couple of weeks um, before eventually, in the doll, I raised with uh, Minister O'Gorman on a, a, a Thursday evening. He stood over that position that nothing was happening with that particular site, um, that there was a, a, a process of assessment being carried out. Only the following day, a communication came out from the department to say, oh yes, this is going to be used uh, for uh, accommodation for internationally uh, you know, uh, displaced uh, persons. So that was a complete failure of engagement with the community, and it actually got the backs of the community up. That premises had been uh, campaigned for by the community to get that turned into a, a, a community uh, space. And we were told umpteen time, time and time again, that it wasn't suitable, that it would not be handed over to the community. And then all of this happened. So, you know, the whole approach from the get go was wrong. So, communication. What does that mean uh, to the department? What does that mean uh, to uh, the, 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 the government? So can I ask you that question first, uh, Mr. McCarthy? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the community engagement team that was established back in October does operate to a standard protocol and approach in terms of uh, new openings. And like, I, 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 I know the frustration where information isn't available and then information becomes available, but it is important that the information is released in a managed way and that everybody is told the same information at the same time. Because, well, Mr. because McCarthy, the, the, the fact is, I as a public representative and the community were lied to that clearly a decision was taken to use that property, that premises, for accommodation. I, and I, we were lied to right up until the last minute. The work was being carried out on the ground. I'm, and we were misled I, I, as, as I'm, public I'm not, representatives. I'm not, I'm not aware of the timings around that in that specific case. Um, but what I would say is that like, we, do, we do try to provide as much information as we can when we can. I mean, there will be instances, and I'm not talking about this particular case, there will be instances, for example, where somebody is preparing an accommodation that they intend to offer to us, but we wouldn't be in the loop at all in respect of that. We wouldn't have been party to any conversations okay. around but look, that. Ju just, I, I, I don't want to labour No, I, I appreciate can, the point. Can you see the difficult position that it's putting public representatives in when we're looking to bring communities with us Absolutely. in terms of what needs and, to be done? Uh, and this mismanagement... Um, you know, at a very basic level of communication, when people are being lied to from the get-go and something is, is happening on the ground. Sorry, Chair, I'll, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. finish on, 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 on that point. Can I just ask in terms of assessment, what, what, what does that mean? 
because I'm aware of you know, the engagement between the department and other um, departments looking for space, looking for premises. Um, so what, what assessment did actually take place in, in that situation or, or any other location where accommodation is, is uh, being sought to be provided? Because I mean, as far as I can see, it goes right back to the failure to have a coherent plan in place that the approach being taken by the department seems to be led uh, by speculators making millions from the process. So what, what community audits actually take place in an area uh, such as Newtown or anywhere else uh, before a decision is taken to put, put in uh, accommodation centres. Yeah, and just, uh, I mean, just to pick up on the on, on public representatives being misled or whatever form of language you wish to choose around that, I mean, uh, just to make the point, we do really appreciate the support of local public representatives on the ground when it comes to challenging openings of this nature. And we are keen that public representatives are told the same information at the same time, which is the approach that the community engagement team seeks to take. We can always build on experiences of openings that went well or didn't go well and modify and evolve the protocol around that. And we're very okay. open to that. Well, unfortunately, that has... Mr McCarty, I, I, I've heard that mantra from the top, from the minister, from the Taoiseach, former Taoiseach, right the way down that, yes, we're going to tighten up on, on communication and engagement. But the reality on the ground is completely different. And it's actually, you know, it's, it's causing huge tensions in communities, which makes the integration piece at the end of it near impossible. So we're, we're creating fires within communities where there doesn't need to be those issues. Absolutely. So communication is key. So you know, this, no disrespect to you. I know you're here to do, 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 do a job and tell us what's happening. But communication, like I, I've been raising this for six months or, or, or more, and I've been told that there's different things happening in the Taoiseach's office in terms of you know, communication and coordination. None of it's happening. None of it's happening, and it's creating chaos in communities. Look, the, the only, the, it is important to point out that we have opened 200 new accommodation centres for international protection since January of last year. Okay. So, so yeah. while, while, so, while so, there are... So, so ju ju just, sorry, I'm just conscious of, of the time. That community audit piece, so before a decision is taken to open a, a, an accommodation centre or um, something like that in the community, what is done in terms of engaging with the HSC in terms of you know access to you know uh, GPs, uh, dentists? Is, is there any audits being there's, carried out? There's, in, in there's, 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 a, there's continual contact with with HSE, with health, with education around what we are doing, and they're in a position to to identify particular pressure points. So we're, we're, we're in a continual dialogue with other parts of the system around where the particular pressure points are. So that does, that does come into play. Okay. Um, I mean, Look, sorry, I'm the, just the, conscious just, of the last Just, just the point in relation to the 200 was simply to say that while there have been very, very high profile and difficult and challenging um, instances of resistance and uh, openings that, 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 that created difficulties, there have been very successful low-key openings as well within Absolutely. that 200 where, where there is community support yeah, and people yeah. are welcomed into those communities and, and it is important to acknowledge that. Ab Absolutely and I, I acknowledge that, that yeah. there is good work going on at, 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 at different levels yeah. but when it goes wrong, it go goes wrong and the case in Wicklow currently on the ground went wrong from the get-go. It, it did go wrong from the get-go. I just want to touch on, uh, you know, the numbers um, that have actually come to the state that are currently in the process of uh, applying for uh, asylum. What, what, what are the uh, up-to-date figures? Do you have the those? Latest, uh, I, 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 well, I, yeah, have you have you to hand Dev Jay? Yeah, is that, is that applications in the last year? Or yeah, so, or? so those seeking international protection currently so within the, that we're providing a, a accommodation. We're, we're providing accommodation for about 29,000 people at the moment. Okay. Uh, about 13,200 people applied for international protection last year and about 13,600 applied for international protection in 2022. Um, and in the first quarter of um, this year, over 5,000 people claimed international protection. So we're seeing a fairly significant jump now in okay. quarter one of this year compared okay. to the very, very high numbers of 23 so, and 22. Yeah, that, that more or less corresponds with the figures I have here. So, um, and a, a rough calculation here that I have, um, you know, and it's not too far off the figures that you gave, that there's over 10,800 people um, who've claimed a, a, asylum 
that are waiting on a, a decision for 16 months or, or, or more. What would the average time, um, you know, before a decision is, is taken in your experience? Do you want to do that? Look, I, it, it is a Department of Justice matter, as I'm, you know, I'm aware of that, but the, yeah, yeah. obviously it has a huge impact yeah. in terms of the provision of, of, yeah. of accommodation. It, it absolutely does. And uh, most recent figures I've sort of heard about or read from maybe a couple of months ago, I think the average processing time was at about 13 or 14 months, but I think you need to clarify that with Department of Justice. Okay. Uh, and that includes accelerated processing times in first instance of about um, two months or so. Okay. But they'd be first instance decision making processing times, whereas the Ma okay. Many cases that get a negative decision. Okay. Well, the figures I have here, is about uh, over 30% are in the process for 16 months or more, and certainly that's not efficient. That's what's creating the bottlenecks within the system where you as a, a department are going out, you know, and, and, and trying to source a, accommodation in areas where it's basically not fit for purpose Thank because you. there isn't a, a, an efficient system. Can I just, one more quick really, question there. There is a right of appeal as well, which kicks in, which obviously prolongs it, and that, that, and that can be a particular bottleneck. Not, 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 not yeah. in all cases, yeah. though. Yeah. Um, can, can, just a, a, a further two very quick uh, questions. Um, of those um, that are in the, 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 the system and that are being provided a, a accommodation for, how, how, how many have actually been granted a, a asylum that are still um, in, in receipt of a accommodation? Uh, just over 5,700 is the most recent figure. Right. 5,700. And how many, ju ju just very, very just briefly, how one many one. are in the uh, accommodation where a decision has been refused um, and accommodation is, is still being provided? Do you have? Uh, I, I don't have a, an up-to-date figure on that, but the most recent figure I had was in the region of 100 or less. 100 or less. Uh, so we've, we've very few of them. Deputy.